Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We will uh, let you join and give you, give you maybe just a, a little bit of time to get settled uh, and get your audio set up. And then we will start our conversation with Magali Combard from Figuier in Provence. So um, thank you for joining us. We're just going to give you just a few uh, seconds to get settled. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, joining me today is Magali Combard uh, from Figuier in Provence. Um, it is such a pleasure to, um, to have you uh, join us today, Magali, uh, to take time out of your day to, um, to uh, share a little bit about your family's estate uh, in Le Vendre in Provence, in Côte de Provence. So uh, I want to thank you so much for, for taking this time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jess, for inviting me. I'm very, very honored and, uh, and, and pleased to be uh, with uh, all of you tonight. Wonderful. Um, I thought what we would do just to begin is to um, maybe share a little bit about, uh, about uh, the Provence, about sort of the, what I like to call the feeling of Provence, because Provence is, uh, has such a special feeling about it. It's um, so much a part of the uh, the wines too, is that once you start to understand um, the, the people, the scenery, the terrain, um, the cuisine, you, you start to really understand why the wines they are the way they are. And um, for me, Magali, it's, uh, I think of uh, the lavender fields and the, the beautiful architecture here that is so different than anywhere else in France. Um, your incredible uh, produce and vegetables and the cuisine that's uh, sometimes very strong with garlic, uh, but always lots of olive oil and wonderful seafood and of course uh, the wines. And I just uh, wanted to point something out here is that you know you're in Provence. Not only is the climate very, very nice, but you see it on the ground because this is a you call this Garrigue, don't you, Magali? Garrigue, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's very colorful, as you can see, because it has a lot of uh, beautiful flowers, but you have pine trees, you have uh, uh, oak, uh, cork oak, you know, that are very, very popular as well. Uh, we are very, very, uh, the, the, the vegetation is very luxurious. Um, and very specific because of our uh, situation, very, very close to the, the, the coast, the sea coast. Yeah, and this is, this is a mixture of um, like lavender, that sometimes it's wild thyme and rosemary, and it, it, you smell this in the air when you're in Provence, but sometimes I even find that we smell this in the wines when we're tasting them, so. Um, this is part of the feeling of Provence too. This is um, from your uh, veranda at the back of the winery. Um, and I remember uh, we had just a, a lovely evening there a few years ago, um, tasting uh, your wines, but also just had some incredible um, food, just uh, uh, pizza la bière, I hope I say it right, with these wonderful yeah. um, flatbreads with onions and olives and um, uh, just uh, so many great flavors. And I just, um, I wanted to share this too. This is our former uh, brand manager for French wine at uh, Crafton Estate. His name is Phil Edwards, and we have Marilyn Krieger there. She's our head of public relations and you. And I was taking a picture of the three of you, and you, you suddenly all turned and had this surprised look because of the, the cicadas. I, you don't call them cicadas. You say cigales? Cigale, yeah. Yeah. And they were so loud. They were incredibly loud. And that's why you have a surprised look on your face. <laughs> they start singing uh, on the mid-June. So very recently we are, we are listening to them. Uh, they, they sing from uh, early morning up to 7 p.m. all day long. And what, what is very funny, and I, I don't know the reason, and I have never 
uh, heard about it and, and, and get the right, the, the, the reason for it, they're singing back uh, later in the day, uh, just before the, the darkness of the, of the night for, for, for an hour. So, so they tell you when to start to work and when you should go in for dinner. Is that, is that right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> We had just a wonderful evening, but I, I just I remember this plate of fruit that we had for a dessert. And this is just the, it's just, I wanted to share the picture because it's the, the bounty of um, Provence, which I just, um, this is, these are my things that I come to mind when I'm thinking about Provence. Um, Magali, I wanted to, you to introduce your family. Um, tell us uh, who are the people in this picture and what do they do at the winery? Well, it's a very beautiful picture that I love. It's, uh, it's, it, that picture has uh, 15 years old. When um, we've joined, my sister and myself, Delphine, which is uh, the, 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 the very one, uh, the very first uh, uh, front line, uh, joined the family, uh, which was run from, run from with through my father and brother. So Alain on the left hand side is uh, is my father and François, uh, my only brother. We are four children. Uh, so one is missing, Valerie, the youngest. Uh, she's not involved in the business. She lives in the, in Tortola in the British Virgin Island, but she's involved with wine business. So. Um, my father, Alain, uh, has, uh, has started everything back in 1992. Uh, he started as a wine carrier in Chablis uh, as a Michel Laroche partner. Uh, and they spent 25 years together. Uh, but at his uh, 50s, early 50s, he wanted to make a change in his life. And uh, both my parents, uh, Gabrielle, my mother, uh, are native from Provence. So uh, at their 50s, they wanted to go back home and uh, found the right place to, to restart everything, uh, buying a new vineyard and uh, producing Provence wine and not Burgundian wines anymore. And that's what happened when they found uh, Saint-André de Figuère, at this time the vineyard was uh, named under Saint-André de Figuère. Uh, it has been newly uh, shortened to Figuère uh, four years ago. Um, and he, he found that place and he felt in love with that place because of um, the, 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 the terroir, the, the nature around it, uh, that proximity with the sea, which is so important and so helpful. Uh, to 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 farm the the, the, the vineyard. Uh, François, my brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Sorry. yes. Go ahead, Magali. Go ahead. Uh, François joined Alain five years later, uh, and he started to be involved in the uh, production, you know, vine making and wine making. And my sister and myself, Delphine, my sister and myself joined the family business back in 2004. Uh, and we've had uh, 10 marvelous years uh, partnering with our father. Uh, he trained us, uh, he, he transmitted our, his, his passion about, about that, uh, our family business. And unfortunately he passed away uh, four years ago now um, after he has transmitted everything to us, and uh, and um, that's a, that's a sad story because he wanted so much to see us operating by ourselves. Uh, but that's you know life, and uh, but we are so proud to be um, to be here and to uh, develop and make uh, our utmost to uh, prove him that he has made the right choice. Well, Magali, that's one thing I find so interesting. So in terms of, is the production manager. Sorry. 
that's one thing I find so interesting about the story of Figuier is that um, Alain came from Chibli, uh, and he was attracted to this uh, this place uh, because I think what you've told me in the past it was the closeness to the sea, but also the soil here, um, and so uh, and I think that's very interesting. Somebody that comes from a cool region where they make very mineralic wines move to somewhere warm and sunny. But um, I think it was in, in part the terroir of this place that, that um, attracted him to it, uh, if I have that correct. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's the reason of his choice, you know, find a choice to, to stay in La Lande and buy that uh, property back in 1992. Um, Chiste make him reminding of Chablis. Uh, Chiste is a sedimented kind of, uh, of, it's a cemented clay from the very, very old, old time. We are talking about a million years ago. And um, the, uh, the expression of the, of the wine produced on cheese are uh, very straight, mineral, fine, elegant wine. And uh, a little bit like Chablis wine, you know, and uh, his palate was uh, pleased to uh, to uh, enjoy that uh, that, uh, that that characteristic that he, he liked so much. Uh, the other good thing about uh, this terroir in La Lande is that uh, we are very very close to the sea, and uh, sea brings that. Um, humidity that it is so precious uh, when uh, you are in the middle of the summer when it gets really really dry when we have some in most of our summertime heat waves uh, that humidity helps so much uh, farming the vines and uh, hydrating the, the the grapes and the and the, and the, and the vegetation so well, it and... makes life much easier uh, than anywhere else in the in the in the other part of the region where it is much much more drier, and uh, uh, that's very helpful. Well, so we see on the screen uh, the the entirety of Provence, and uh, the the area in blue is called Ars, Ars en Provence, which is a quite a large area. But the biggest appellation of all in Provence is Côte de Provence, but as you just said, Magdalene, not all of Côte de Provence is the same. It's a, it's a big area. And um, I think one thing you've, you've always tried to teach me about Provence is that the further you get from the sea, more inland, the warmer it gets. And I wanted everybody to understand that um, when we say La, La Lande and Figuier is close to the sea, it's really right on the, the Mediterranean. So. This is where you are, and it's one of the five. It's it's a subzone of Côte de Provence, and we even um, we even see that on the labels of some of your wines that um, that it's coming from a very special uh, appellation, a very special uh, terroir that is different than the rest of uh, Côte de Provence. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, as I said earlier, we're very very lucky to be located right. Um, on the coastline, uh, it's um, we have higher yield because of that humidity. Or our vines are less suffering from uh, from from the heat and the dryness of the climate. Uh, we are harvesting very early in the in the season. Uh, Sometimes it starts uh, uh, second week of August. So you know and. Uh, and having that humidity, that sea influence, um, is 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 uh, is uh, is uh, very very helpful. And you can read it on, on uh, when when you taste the wines. The wines are not uh, heavy because of the the higher yield. And it has freshness. It has uh, that mineral notes coming from the cheese. So um, that's why La Lande is considered as one of the fifth cru uh, from Provence because of that um, very, very characteristical expression uh, coming out from the terroir. 
Well, um, this is not a, a great photo. I took this photo. And the reason it's a little blurry is because we were on a boat, I believe, tasting some wines of yours. Uh, but I wanted to show that because this is really only a few kilometers from the winery. And in fact, uh, if we have a look at this picture, you can see uh, the sea in the background and, and your vineyard, vineyards in the foreground. So um, there, there's one more picture I wanted to share of the, the vineyard. Uh, that's a beautiful one as well, but this is the schist that you were speaking of, and you can e even see that it's it's on the surface here. And this is, um, as you've told me in the past, the sea and the schist soil, it's the identity of, of Tubiere. Completely, mm. completely. Uh, sea influence and schist, you know, is our, uh, how do you say that, uh, ADN or um, it's inside our blood, you know, it's, uh, oh, I can't remember the name in English, but uh, it's really our signature. Yeah. Yes. You, I you feel it and, and taste it in the wines. Uh, Magli, I think another thing very important to speak about um, when we are looking at these images of the, the vineyards is can you tell us about, I, I know that working in an organic way uh, is very important to you. And um, maybe you can tell us a bit about your philosophy in the vineyard, especially when it comes to working um, in organic. Mm -hmm. Well, when Alain bought the domain back in 1992, the uh, vineyard was made of 18 hectares of vine. Today we have 120. Uh, these vines were already certified organic with the EcoCert certification. And at this time, in the early 1890s, Nobody, nobody was understanding what uh, organic meant, you know. And uh, my father, uh, coming from Chablis, wasn't so uh, concerned about about organic, but uh, he wanted he wanted to to keep uh, that organic farming because he, he saw that it was uh, much better than anything, uh, even though it was not. Uh, uh, a marketing thing at this time is so that it was good for the uh, environment protection. So we, we kept the organic farming and today all the vineyard uh, from La Lande is certified and we are very, very, very keen, not only because of the uh, marketing advantage uh, it has, uh, it has became, uh, but more as well because of the idea of protection environment, uh, providing a, a more quali quality uh, pro product, you know, less uh, with no use of uh, chemical products uh, nor pesticide, you know, it's much safer to everyone. So our yes. AOP Côte de Provence Ranch is uh, fully certified or under conversion with the signature ranch. Um, and uh, I should have said earlier for the audience, if you would like to ask us a question or ask Magali something, you can type it into the Q&A. So you can see that uh, Q&A button, it's either at the top or bottom of your screen, but if you uh, open up that screen and you want to ask a question, please um, feel free to type it into the Q&A. Um, so yes, uh, and John Davison says, hello, Magali, by the way. So uh, your, some hello. of your fans are here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me go back to my uh, screen because uh, something you just said um, about, I, you've had 100, you had 84 hectares, um, but you've added uh, an additional property um, to make it a total of 120. This new acquisition was just in 2019. And that is also uh, will be organic, correct? Yes. Uh, last December, we have been uh, very happy to uh, to acquire and, and buy a new vineyard, which is located at 30 minutes from where we are, no, much more northern. The name of the of the place is Pignon. Um, it's a it's a lovely property made of 35 hectares of vines a lovely 18th century Bastide where we can, uh, we will be able to host all of you uh, on your next traveling to Provence. 
Um, it's a way for us to be fully uh, autonomous in our grape sourcing. Uh, and that this, the vineyard wasn't converted into uh, organic certification yet. So Francois has started uh, the conversion uh, on, uh, on net last year. So within three years, uh, three vintage time, uh, and it makes, uh, it will happen in, uh, on the 2022 vintage, all our range, Côte de Provence ranges, will be certified EcoCert. And we will be fully, uh, we will be 100% uh, uh, all the, sorry, uh, the, the sourcing will be fully ours. You know, we, are, we will not be um, uh, depend, uh, dependent upon the exterior market anymore, you know. And all, everything will be certified, which is a, a great asset uh, in our uh, today's, uh, today's markets. It's, it's great um, that you control the farming, but you also control the quality then. And so this is, I think, a, a wonderful new uh, development for Figuier. Um, some, Magali, somebody is asking in relation to the schist soil that we spoke about, they say, they're saying, we rarely hear about soil in Provence. What do most producers or other areas have in comparison? So they're asking, you have schist that makes Levand and your property, your, uh, your place special, but compared to the other places in Provence, what, what do they normally find in other regions? That's a good question. Uh, a very well-known region, which is Bandol, uh, which is uh, located at uh, half an hour from us, uh, their uh, characteristic uh, soil is clay, so much more richer soil than uh, what we have. They are enjoying the sea influence a lot because most of the Bandol the vineyard is located on, uh, 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 around the, the, on the coastline as well. Um, we have um, lots of clay. We have limestone, for instance, and in our new property, on our new property, which is uh, in the interior uh, part of the of the Côte de Provence uh, producing region. We have limestone there, uh, oh. and uh, more 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 east. Uh, for instance, a, a very famous name in, 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 in the United States, uh, White Spring Angel. They are located in Fréjus area, which is um, eastern uh, compared to, to us. They have, um, how do you say that, um, volcanic kind of soil, because it's used yes. it, and with a lot of um, iron, you know, so... You have a lot of, uh, it's, the, the region is so, so large, you know, it, it goes from X to Nice. That makes 150 kilometers large, you know, and uh, so the diversity in terms of terroir is just uh, amazing. And that's why Provence uh, is creating a cru, you know, like a village, appellation village, that uh, show up uh, this very, very different uh, terroir style. Uh, and La Londe is part of them. Uh, currently, we, you have six available cru based on uh, terroir specificities. And I hope we will, uh, we will have more, more of them in the, in the, in the, in the, in the coming future uh, because it shows the consumer how diverse the region uh, can be and uh, and it produced so, so many new and different expression in the, in the wines. It makes it rich, you know. With, with your new acquisition uh, on limestone soil and in the interior, that has to be a very different uh, expression than what you get um, in Levant. So that will be interesting to watch as, it, as things develop in the future. Well, you can already uh, uh, see uh, what it produced, that terroir blend uh, on the 19th vintage on Magali and Francois. Because wow. uh, 
we have already blended the two terroirs to get, uh, together in our 19 uh, vintage with Magali and Francois. Great. Uh, the name of that new property, represents 40% of the new blend on Magali and Francois. And uh, it's not so obvious because we have the same varietals blended together. We haven't changed our recipe or blendings rules. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, it, it brings a, a, a finest to, to both wines uh, and a little bit more of a complexity, but uh, we have made it, you know, in, in, in the manner of uh, uh, we, we don't, we, we, we want to keep constant uh, and, and that's, and we've really made the most we can to preserve and conserve the right expression of what we like in both uh, of these cuvées, which, which are freshness and fruitiness. Have you noticed anything, Jess? Uh, on yeah, the, on I, the I, notice your, I, I notice your wines are better every single vintage I taste them. So <laughs> I'll, I'll pay a close attention to why that might be. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, the white wines of Figuier because um, actually Alain's first love uh, when he came to um, Provence was uh, to make Rolle. Uh, Rolle is a synonym. Uh, for an Italian grape variety, uh, Vermentino, which is quite, um, quite important in Provence. Uh, and this was, I think, uh, as you've explained to me in the past, Magali, his thinking was to work with this variety role on these schist soils and to get something, you know, very Chablis in his thinking, to have something very mineral and focused. Um, can you talk about your, your uh, white wine production at, uh, at Figuier? Well, when Alain arrives, uh, yeah, back in 1992 again, uh, rosé wasn't a big trend in France, you know. Uh, uh, rosé meant poor quality wines. And being uh, a, a, a Burgundian winemaker, it was obvious to him to emphasize and, uh, and, and focus on white wine. And um, very honestly, Alain discovered uh, that blend, Rolle, uh, and he, he just loved it because it reminds him so much uh, Chablis, um, not because of the aromatic characteristic of, uh, of that grape, but because of that uh, general feeling coming out from that cheese with uh, those, these mineral notes and this uh, uh, fineness uh, that uh, we find uh, in, uh, in, in, our, in our white wine. So uh, Alain made his fame, started with uh, getting well known uh, because of its, uh, his white wine. Uh, and uh, we have a lovely, uh, we, we, we play a lot with Roll. Roll is uh, in, our main, in, in our three cuvées that you can, uh, that we are displaying right now. Roll is the predominant grape in the blend. Um, 100% with the Mediterranean, uh, 35% with Valérie and 70% with, uh, with Première. And the, the, the other grapes which are blended in these cuvées are uh, Uniblanc and Sémillon. Um, Warren, Magali, uh, Warren is asking about the Premier Blanc. Um, while clients love the La Méditerranée, uh, they are really impressed with the elevated quality and complexity of Premier. What's the difference in gaining that quality enhancement? Enhancement. You said one thing is the higher percentage of roll, but uh, what else is is that um, is a great great wine. Why? What makes it so special? Mm -hmm. Don't forget that our uh, Mediterranean range is an IGP, not an AOP. So in terms of uh, uh, soil uh, classification. Uh, these soil from IGPs are uh, not non uh, exposed. It's 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 usually they have no exposition and they are 
less qualified, less quality, qualified in terms of uh, uh, quality, and as well in terms of yield, uh, the yield with IGPs are much higher. They are they are uh, than than with AOPs by by two higher than uh, than than uh, with AOPs. So. Um, it it brings a lovely, refreshing, easy to drink, pleasurable kind of wines, uh, because it brings, uh, in terms of, of, of volume produced, it's 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 higher. With with the premier straight away, we are concentrating the yield on the vines. Um, it's it's cheese from La Lande, 100% cheese from La Lande, and. Another and it's it's all made. It's our own production. Uh, Mediterranean. It's a negos uh, wine that is uh, sourced uh, from 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 exterior uh, sourcing. Uh, and there are so many reasons why Mediterranean uh, Premier is so. It's much more complex and much more. We are reaching that kind of gastronomic. Uh, characteristic, you know, uh, and press selection as well with uh, with Premier. The Premier are coming from uh, free running juices. It's not pressing pressed at all, so it brings you know more uh, richer, richer, richer juices. I hope I'm clear. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Magali, um this is a, you sent me this picture from the cellar and um, it's, we, you know, it's not so interesting to look at stainless steel tanks, but the reason I wanted to include the picture is because you, you always describe your the style of the wines you produce. You want very fresh, crisp, very clear flavors, and you want the wines to have a, a certain tightness to them. And um, I think uh, part of it is the, the fact that these wines are vinified in, in inox or stainless steel tanks to get this very crisp, clean, clear style that you, you are known for. And, and Magali, um, we want to talk about rosé, of course. Uh, and I, first, my first question is, what, what percentage of your production is rosé? Well, it's very high. Uh, 80 percent of our production is rosé. Ten percent is white, and ten percent is red. Uh, and that's uh, that's kind of stabilized right now, you know. But we have had a big, big increase on um, uh, with, with rosé wines in these uh, past 10, 10 years, and uh, no wonder why uh, the American markets are, you know, one of the good reason for it. But domestically as well, um, France consume more rosé than white wine. So uh, you have the first conception is red, then rosé, and then white. So, and that, that has changed uh, five years ago. So big, big tendency, big, big fame around rosé wines, as you know. You, you, all of these, uh, the entire series of rosé that you produce are fantastic. I, I've been drinking a lot of Mediterranean uh, this summer so far, uh, but the, the wine perhaps that they know the best from you is the Magali, the, what we call the signature series. And then we get into uh, some of your top cuvées, um, the Premier and then Confidential, and to the question we had earlier about what makes these wines so special, we really, I think, uh, see the character of La Lande, especially in the Confidential, but um, these are just uh, just outstanding uh, rosés. Uh, some of the some of the best I've tasted. So, um, they're, the entire line is really impressive. Magali, I wanted to ask you. I thought it might be interesting for the audience to understand. You you want a very specific uh, color in your rosé, and um, one thing I wanted to show everyone is that, of course, there's different ways of producing rosé. One one is this method called sanier. It's uh, usually comes from comes from red wine production, really. You're bleeding off, that's the saignet part of it, bleeding off the tank of red, concentrating the color of the red, but giving you this sort of byproduct of rosé, but that's really not um, the way things are done in Provence at all, is it? Uh, do you find no. that at all in Provence? 
Saignier is not the uh, winemaking technique uh, uh, used in, in Provence. Provence has always used, uh, even, even earlier in, 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 in the past, uh, pressed press, press press, press roses coming from pressed juice and, and free, free run juices, as I've mentioned with Première, in order to bring up the uh, general quality of the wine. Um, but Seigne, uh, to be honest and to be, uh, to be clear, is less and less produced as well in some other regions like Rhone or Languedoc or even Bordeaux. And the reason is it brings color to the juices. And uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, the consumer likes pale rosé. So Seigne is not anymore adapted to the, the market need and it's less and less uh, used. Yes? Exactly. We, we seem to have lost your video, but hopefully it comes back uh, in just a minute. There you are. We see you again. Oh, sorry. I was... <laughs> no problem. Um, but yeah. uh, John is asking a question about the Magali. Um, he's asking why the decision to go back to the cork closure for Magali Rosé. Well, that's, that's a wineboard decision. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's it's. Uh, I think Magali, um, as in France, Magali is that kind of rosé that is mostly uh, more 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 uh, largely uh, uh, distributed to uh, in restaurants and less in retail stores. And restaurants likes, uh, you know, uh, when, when they, they pour the wine by bottle, they like to have cork and not screw caps. Maybe that's a reason. But I understand that uh, uh, screw cap is very useful when you pull, uh, serve to manipulate, um, but that's not my decision. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's 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 very very much feasible to provide both because both are available. <laughs> but is it a question then of um, logistic, uh, you know, inventories? Uh, it's always, I, but that's, that have screw caps or cork, diam cork. Thank you for clearing that up, Magali. And then um, David is asking one more winemaking question. Um, can you explain the vacuum press? Sorry? Uh, can you explain the vacuum press? What do you mean by vacuum press? Mm, Sorry, I we, don't know that. Uh, word I don't in. know you. I don't know it either, but we'll ha if David uh, could help us understand the question a little better, we'll, we'll ask that question again. I wanted to uh, also explain that um, there are some very, very good red wines produced at uh, Figuere. Um, and so you do find oak barrels, barrique. Uh, I understand the, the question of vacuum press. Oh, it's good. a new, new pressing technique from uh, Instead of having a pneumatic pressing machine, uh, we are one of the only one in Provence to, to use the new concept of pressing which is based on extracting the air out of the uh, pressing machine in the new pressing uh, technique system uh, three years ago. 
and it's um, it's it's extracting the juice much quicker. Uh, If everybody is uh, still with us, I think we're having a few technical di difficulties uh, with, uh, with Zoom and with Bagley. Hopefully she, she returns, but um, we almost got through the entire thing without a technical glitch, which is a, a good thing. I just wanted to, she might, uh, Magali might uh, join us here uh, again. I hope so, so we can at least say goodbye. Oh, I see she's trying to reconnect, good. But uh, I will fill in for her and say there's some excellent reds being produced at uh, Figuier. Uh, so you definitely do find uh, Barrique in the cellar. And uh, these are the, this is the line. And as you saw throughout the presentation, there's a, a series of uh, wines produced in each category, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean line, uh, the ghost line, um, the, probably the line that um, we see the most uh, sort of the signature of the winery and uh, sort of the calling card of the winery is the signature series. And in this case, it's uh, the Francois uh, red and then really special, the premier uh, from Figuier. Uh, Magali, you're, you're back, hello. And if we can, I'm gonna ask Magali to uh, unmute herself. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Magdalene. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> we we almost got through this without a technical glitch, but uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. So suddenly I appeared. Yes, that's why. And my internet connection might have, you know, been a uh, weak at uh, at this stage. Anyway, not a problem. To be uh, back. We're we're all used to it now. We know we know that this is part of the deal. Um, but thank you for coming back. And I was just explaining the the red red wine series. Um, and uh, perhaps you want to say a few words here before we um, sign off for today. Well, as with the three. This is uh, technology for you. Sorry uh, that we. Red ranges are very much each 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 range each style uh, Mediterranean range can can offer. Can you Magdalene? hear me? Yeah. Yes. We can you hear you. You should hear me. I have no sign of. Uh, but anyway, it's difficult. François, François is a. Is a blend of um, Cabernet, Syrah, Sanson, and Grenache. Uh, it's a little bit more concentrated. With with the Barberan uh, blend, it has a little bit of oak. Uh, before before Barberan, we didn't have any oak uh, blended with this uh, with this cuvee. Uh, about twenty percent of the of the blend is is oaked. In, uh, in barrels because of that uh, new uh, sourcing from Barberan. And, and Première is 100% uh, Lalonde schist soil, and it's uh, predominantly Mourvedre, blended with uh, Syrah, with uh, eight That's... months of aging. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely expression of Mourvedre, which I love, you know, with this uh, characteristic uh, uh, black fruit notes, black currant, uh, licorice, uh, sometimes that uh, garlic notes, you know, rosemary and, and thyme. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the best companion for, for lamb, 
lamb meat. And, and Morvedra is such a fantastic uh, grape variety, a little misunderstood, I think, and it really wants a very, I think, specific uh, terroir, probably maybe at its best uh, in Provence. So um, that is, a, that is a, a very much a specialty and something I, I really love for those same reasons. It's got a wildness to it and a spicy herbaceousness and uh, just a wonderful, wonderful wine. Magali? Since, since technology has caught up with us and we're, our audio is okay, I maybe will say um, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join us today, for explaining your philosophy, the history of, of Figuiere, um, and, uh, and for talking about the wines. Uh, I think we all uh, miss, uh, miss Europe a lot right now and seeing those pictures and speaking with you we, we miss it even more now, so we can't wait to get back and see you. Well, I hope I have uh, made you traveling uh, tonight to, to Provence a little bit, and uh, I hope things will get back to normal, uh, and I'm pretty convinced that it will happen. And uh, I, would, I would like to thank everybody from the team, wine boat team, and our, our uh, our customers that are with us tonight, thank you so much for all the efforts that you are doing to to promote our wines and to ha to hand sell them on the market. So thank you to all of you and uh, uh, stay safe and have a great great uh, uh, evening. Au revoir, merci, Magali. Have a merci. lovely evening. À bientôt. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.